Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where we're doing a little bit something different to the usual coloured pencil pieces you see from me. I'm trying my hand at some painting again because I'm really feeling inspired and everything by landscapes at the moment. Everything around me, especially where I live, like by the coast, there's so many beautiful scenes and everything. And I'm just like, I just, I need to do some painting. This painting though isn't of a local scene to me, but this is from when I went to the Lake District this time last year. So it's a scene of uh, River Lother, um, which was right next to the place that we stayed and it was really, really lovely. And I took some really great photos and I was really drawn to this one. You'll see it at the final piece, probably why I was drawn to it because there's just so many really nice elements about this particular picture I think. First of all one of the things I want to mention is that I'm actually painting this for the wetlands theme that I have created over on my Patreon channel. So usually on Patreon I do like a monthly challenge and it's usually like centered around a colored pencil technique or anything but I'm slightly changing direction in th the things that I'm doing so I'm focusing more on conservation I've done a lot of like donating to conservation and everything but I'm really trying to up my game with like the education of it and that kind of thing so instead of doing a challenge over on Patreon that was specific to coloured pencil I have decided to start doing challenges that are animal and like biome and just general like ecological features related so at the moment the challenge is wetlands and I knew I had this beautiful photo and I wanted to paint obviously so this kind of went a little bit hand in hand and kind of killed two birds with one stone for filling out a little bit of that challenge of just drawing anything that is related or painting anything that is related to wetlands be that wildlife, flora, landscapes I've decided to go for this particular landscape my challenges from now on will last over a period of two months rather than one month to give people a lot more time to get involved because I know everybody's getting busy now that the world's getting back to its kind of normal-ish pace so just to give everyone time I'm now doing challenges every two months rather than every single month and then it also just gives you time to experiment with different things as well so I was initially going to go in with a, a coloured pencil piece and do it as a tutorial but I've just been really drawn to doing this. I'm going to do a coloured pencil tutorial as well but for the time being I just I feel like I, my heart just has to go into doing this and I want to do another one as well with a local photo that I've taken. Part of the direction which I'm kind of taking my work in trying to educate people and just bring more awareness to conservation side of wildlife art is um, going back to kind of doing what I was doing with the Animal Artist Collective and educating people a little bit, giving some facts about things that we're drawing, things that we're doing, that kind of thing. So with this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the painting process and everything in a second but I just wanted to mention a few kind of key aspects of wetlands as it were. Uh, just give you a little bit of info in case you're wondering, Amy, what the hell is a wetland and why does it concern me? Well, I'm just going to give you a few facts. So wetlands are mainly areas covered by water and they're mainly areas where water meets land. So like where rivers meet land, like river mouths, that kind of thing. Um, so they're lakes, ponds, rivers, but wetlands can also cover places like mangroves and coral reefs. And coral reefs was one that struck me because I was like, hmm, wouldn't initially think that it was like wetland, like you think bogs, marshes, rivers and ponds. So coral reefs was a different one for me. Um, and I really want to do like coral reef themed things now as well. And 40% of the Earth's wildlife actually use or depend on wetlands and they're the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. So you'll find a lot of different organisms and species living in and around and using the wetland areas and wetlands actually act as natural filters for water as well by removing harmful bacteria, and they hold a lot of pollutants as well which us humans and other 
various things contribute to but wetlands are actually fantastic for carbon recapturing as well and can actually store up to 50 percent more carbon than rainforests so they're actually really useful in helping to combat climate change and reducing our carbon carbon emissions unfortunately wetlands are being drained and destroyed to make way for housing and like commercial developments like the new housing developments that you see a lot of wetland area is actually being destroyed to make room for that as well as agricultural fields as well and peat compost is actually taken from wetlands and peatlands form roughly about 50 percent of wetlands so it's really essential if you're hoping to combat and kind of help the wetland area is to not buy peat compost and to buy the peat free compost and that's going to help to combat the degradation of wetlands and 87 percent of the wetlands areas in the global community has actually been lost in the last 300 years so it's actually declining like pretty quickly so what actually contributes to the degradation of wetlands well there's a number of things but mainly waste from humans plastic left in rivers um, just general household waste as well where some companies don't dispose of it properly and they just pollute wetland environments rivers and that kind of thing they just pollute it with all of our waste that contributes to the degradation um, agricultural as well so toxic substances and the use of fertilizers and stuff often find their way into wetlands and although wetlands are natural filters there's far too much of it floating around for it to filter it effectively and when all of these things are sitting in wetlands and they're not getting processed as quickly as they could then it's just harming the environment and adding to that degradation ways in which you can help the most common one is obviously to reduce waste and just be a little bit more mindful of what you're actually putting out into the world a lot of us can actually reduce quite a lot of our waste by composting our food waste uh, just recycling in general making sure that we're recycling properly our plastics and our glasses not just throwing them into like the general household waste and just being a little bit more conservative with buying different things and throwing things away just really being mindful about what you're actually throwing away and putting back out into the world um, other ways if you have anything local to use volunteering litter picking um, helping to like tidy up these areas and just observe them and just help to make sure that they're not like getting any further damage and that type of thing so there's a couple of places around me actually that have um, that are requiring wetland volunteers for this particular kind of project and if you visit the I'll leave a website down below but if you visit the WWT website there's volunteer opportunities that you can search for in your local area so you can see if there's anything around that you can help with doing and also planting so with the degradation of wetlands we're also losing a lot of plant life and all of that and by planting some of the natural plants that you would find around wetlands you're actually going to help bring back bees and butterflies and just create a little bit more of a biodiversity from those plants that we're actually losing at quite a fast rate so doing a little bit of research into what kind of plants you would find in these environments and planting them yourself in your own garden or even like making your own little pond or something like that is just going to really help to combat all of this i don't want these videos to be all doom and gloom because obviously turning my eye to being a bit more of a conservation wildlife artist rather than just general I'm a fun wildlife artist there's going to be a few serious topics that obviously I want to cover with conservation comes like a little bit more of like a sad side because if I'm drawing and doing things for conservation then they're generally things that are in decline or that we're losing really rapidly but I don't want it to be doom and gloom like there are ways that we can help combat um, degradation of environments and the disappearance of vulnerable species and all of that there are things that we can do so have a little bit of a research into how you can help if you are interested in doing that which if you're watching this video i really hope that you are interested in that type of thing but yeah i just kind of want to give like a little bit of information 
around any kind of challenges or subjects that I'm drawing. So if it's an animal, I want to give a little bit more information about it, that type of thing. Um, so I really hope that you will follow me with this journey and support it as well. I'm hoping that some of these issues are close to your hearts as well. If you're following me for wildlife work, I find that a lot of wildlife artists are actually really, really passionate about conservation and that type of thing as well. So I hope that you are as well. But the process of this particular painting, let's get into that because as you can see, it's really starting to come together. I really did enjoy painting this actually. It was actually a really quick painting. I think it took me about an hour and 40 minutes. I was trying to be quite loose because I'm still trying to find my painting style. I've previously done a painting of a lake, uh, which is kind of similar to this. This I used gouache for this painting, just in case you're wondering. Um, but yeah, um, I was just trying to find, still trying to find my painting style. I find by watching this back that I do actually use quite a lot of stippling and I really like those kind of broad brush stroke effects. Uh, something in my coloured pencil work, obviously I like everything really nice and smooth, but with my painting, I kind of like that kind of messy kind of choppy look. So I'm feeling like I'm going to explore that a little bit further. But as for the colour palette, I actually used a limited colour palette for this. So I just used two different types of blue, a green, a yellow and an ochre. So I've made all of the darks by mixing ochre and one of the darker blues. And I've used um, mixtures of yellow and green to create all of the different green tones. Mix them with blue as well, the yellow and the blue together to create an even different type of green. So I've really tried to limit the palette and I think I've created a really wonderful outcome. I'm really pleased with this painting. Like using that limited palette has really forced me to go and look at my colour theory and all of that and try and create some really interesting and harmonious kind of colours that really work together and I think I've achieved it. I'm looking at the finished piece I've got up on my shelf at the moment and it does actually look really nice. Towards the end I start to add a lot more of the water effect. The water like wasn't really smooth and glassy looking, it was kind of choppy because you had all of these rocks in the water and the, the river was kind of flowing around them quite rapidly. So it kind of looks a little bit like rapids and like splashy and I think with my little stippling effect that I've got going on that I really kind of conveyed that. I hope that comes across anyway. Um, but yeah, I kind of put down all of the shapes and everything first as you saw at the beginning and kind of mapped out the lighter areas. I'm still kind of stuck in that um, kind of mindset of coloured pencil of using the lighter colours first and then going in with darker colours. And I always forget with painting that you can go in with the lighter colours on top and I found when I was adding in the water I was like actually you know what I can add the white over the top so I can create that really kind of choppy effect and I kind of added in the bits of sky and the field and everything that you can see in the background and the tree hanging over the top. I just really layered everything up and it was just a really nice, really smooth, peaceful process. My soul had a really good time painting this. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's come out really, really nicely and um, I am pleased with the final outcome of it. So you can see I'm kind of adding in like different types of greens, just kind of adding in little areas to those rocks and just making the water appear a little bit more like it's moving. Before I added in all of these kind of things that I'm adding in now, the water looked kind of too still and it looked didn't really have any energy throwing flowing through it but when I'm adding in these like little strokes of different color through the water and everything and just adding in a little bit more of that white splash and everything I feel like it just gives it a little bit more movement and just gives it a little extra something uh yeah so I feel like I felt like I was overworking this at first, but then the more I kept going, the more I was kind of becoming more attuned to what I needed to do. Painting becomes quite difficult to me, I find, but the more I was doing it, the more I was feeling comfortable and the more I want to paint now. But you can see the final outcome now. I really love it and I really hope that you do too and if you want to join in over on Patreon with my challenge you're more than welcome to. 
Uh, it's running for the rest of August, so feel free to hop on over there. But otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed this video and let me know if you want to see more like it in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!